This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven step approach of the AIG VDA FMEA handbook, first edition. Today we're going to be looking at step six, optimization. You may remember in the earlier steps that we've looked at in FMEA, we've talked about FMEA efficiency. So this is about management committing to make the investment in people's time, but also to invest in any of the improvements needed as a result of the FMEA activity. But management also want the team to deliver benefits. This is reduce customer complaints, reduce warranty concerns, and importantly, reduction in the cost of non-quality. So as we're drawing towards the end of this series, hopefully now you've all got a really good idea about the seven step approach to developing a process FMEA. To recap, we looked at step one, two, and three, which is about analyzing the system. We've already looked at step four and five, which is about failure analysis and risk analysis. Today, we're gonna to be looking at step six, optimization. To make this video series as practical as possible, we've been working within the context of a case study. Just uh, to summarize, this is a product for GM. It's gonna be used by GM for electrical connection with a mated part. And for the first time in our company, we're using a robot to transfer pins into a tool for the injection molding. Hopefully you've already picked up through this video series that although some parts of developing an FMEA are similar to that that you might have used in the FMEA 4th edition AIG manual, this seven step methodology tends to go much deeper into the manufacturing process to identify risk. In particular, really understanding the detailed 4M influence on the process. You may also remember in step five that what we did against the risks that we'd identified, we came up with rankings of severity, occurrence and detection, and that led us to an action priority ranking, which was either high, medium or low. This provides an input into step six, which is about optimization. So step six, optimization. What is the purpose of this step? So this step is to determine actions to mitigate risk and assess the effectiveness of those actions. And in very simple terms, the objectives are, we need to identify actions, we need to assign responsibilities. We need to implement and document the actions. We need to confirm that the actions have been effectively implemented. And only then do we go back and reassess the risk after the actions have been taken. So how do we approach this sixth step optimization? Well, hopefully you were already picked up that we would focus first on any high action priority rankings. We wouldn't stop there, but that really based upon risk should be the focus. And then what we need to say, what can we do to optimize or reduce the risk? So maybe we have to go back to GM, or maybe we have to go back to our own design team if we have one, and say, can we make any product modifications? Because that would really be the only way that we could change severity, which is making a product design change. Maybe though, we can make modifications to the process to reduce occurrence by improving the prevention controls. Or maybe we have to improve our detection ability. In the case of process modification, all impacted process steps, we would go back and reevaluate again. So to recap the case study example for step five risk analysis, for this particular example where the pins could be dropped by the robot, we came up with an action priority ranking of high. So in this case then, the team would say, okay, we have a high risk, 
What can we potentially do to reduce the risk? So somebody in the team was allocated an action to investigate the use of sensors in the robot that would immediately detect if a pin has been dropped. So this was allocated to Ian Day. He committed to a target completion date of the 20th of July. This action was actually done and sensors were fitted to the robot and they were comprehensively tested to make sure that they worked. And this testing was completed on the 26th of July. So after this action was implemented, the team can then go back and rescore. And for this case study example, we haven't made any product design change. So the severity would remain at seven. But we have improved the prevention control, so the occurrence ranking reduces to two. But at this stage, we haven't made any changes to detection. So the detection will remain at eight. So going back now to action priority after we've taken the improvement and we'll stick with a case study example. So in this case now we have a severity of between seven and eight, an occurrence between two and three and a detection between seven and ten. What we've done by improving the prevention control is we've reduced the action priority risk to medium. So let's summarize step six optimization. So now what we have is a prioritized action plan to address risk. We have clearly assigned responsibilities and we have target completion dates. The team would now track to make sure the actions were completed, implemented and completed on time. Once these have been uh, implemented, we can then go back and rescore and come up with new action priority rankings. Remember, this is an ongoing improvement process. It doesn't stop here.